Bonjour, it's Theo. How do you do? <laughs> okay, it's the end of the day. I'm tired. So when I'm tired, I love to rank and judge anything. So we're gonna do today a special video where I want to rank all the 20 arrondissements of Paris. The arrondissements are the district of Paris and each one has its own vibe, its own culture, its own things to discover inside. It's the occasion to talk about each arrondissement and give you my own ranking of which ones are the best. Of course, you know that it's completely objective, of course. <laughs> I found a tier list online and I just changed all the rows, the ranking, to just put my signature vibe into it. So at the bottom of the tier list, you have who lives there for the district where you don't have anything to do inside. Then you have the side eye for the arrondissements that are not really safe to visit in Paris. Then you have don't give up. It's for the arrondissements that are not that good, but that they're trying. But I think that they can do it, so I just want to give some support. Then you have, okay, we know it's cool. It's for all the overrated places. We have some of them in Paris, some arrondissements where people who are living here are saying that it's the best place on earth, but it's not. We're gonna talk about them. Then you have Eat the Rich. It's for all the fancy and chic places in Paris with all the monuments and the expensive luxury shops. And we have plenty of them. I love it. It's for the district that I really like, that I think that they are good to visit or even to live in. And then for the top of the tier list, we have the arrondissement that I want in my veins, the top tier of Paris. I think now we are ready to start. The first arrondissement. This is the center of Paris. It's historical with many monuments. You have the Louvre Museum, the Jardin des Tuileries. It's the entrance of the Champs Elysees. It's really beautiful. The Rue de Rivoli is fantastic with many brasseries and many beautiful restaurants. I just love the first arrondissement. But it's also really crowded and expensive because it's a touristic area. You have also Châtelet, which is more popular, but it's not as beautiful as the Rue de Rivoli. I'm gonna still put the first arrondissement at the Eat the Rich Row. It's fancy. It's chic. It's a really good place. Okay, we are already talking about one of the goats. The second arrondissement, it's maybe my famous district in Paris. I just love the vibe. It's chic and casual at the same time. It's near the Palais Royal and the Opera. You have many restaurants, cafes, co-working, pastry shops. Everything is just perfect. Near the Place de la Bourse, it's more an office and working area. But it's also more quiet than the first arrondissement. You have everything I like in this place. You have the Galerie Vivienne. I love the second arrondissement. It's one of my favorites in Paris. I want it in my veins. The third arrondissement, it's one of the two arrondissements of the Marais area. This is the trendy, artsy district of Paris with many art galleries, artistic shops. You have good parks like the Square du Temple. I just love the vibe. I'm gonna put it in. I love it. I think it's gonna be the same with the fourth arrondissement, the second part of the Marais. You have the Place des Vosges, one of the most beautiful gardens in Paris. I just love the fourth. I'm gonna put it in. I love it. For the first arrondissement, we were on top of the Seine River, on the right bank of Paris. Now it's time to cross the Seine River and go to the other side. With the fifth arrondissement, the Student District. It's an historical place because you can find many constructions from the Roman Empire, like Les Arènes de Lutèce, which is the, the oldest construction in Paris. It's beautiful, the fifth. You have the Jardin de Luxembourg, the Panthéon, where all the famous people in France are buried inside, the most important people from the French history. And you have also many universities like La Sorbonne. You have the Rue Mouffetard with many cheap crepes to eat. All along the Seine River, it's beautiful, many bookshops. It's a student area with a lot of history. I'm gonna put it in. I love it. The sixth arrondissement, it's just next to the fifth. It's also called Saint-Germain-des-Prés. It's the poet's district of Paris where all the authors used to meet in the café, the Café de Flore, les Deux Magots. It's an iconic place in Paris. It's also important for the history because you have Le Procope, the oldest restaurant in Paris, and it's where all the revolutionary men were meeting during the revolution. So it's an important place. But Saint-Germain-des-Prés, we know that it's good. We already know. People living here are just talking all the time about it. It's a bit overrated now. You have many touristic places that are not as good as before. It's a bit expensive for what it is. So it's good, but we know it's cool. So I need to put the six in, okay, we know it's cool because it's overrated. The seventh arrondissement, do you know the seventh arrondissement? Maybe because it's the Tour Eiffel arrondissement in Paris. It's a big residential area for many rich people. It's fancy. You also have many ministries that are located in the seventh. 
and the Musée Rodin a beautiful museum. I don't really know that much the 7th arrondissement. It's more a residential area, so I'm gonna put it in Eat the Rich. The 8th arrondissement is more interesting than the 7th. It's also even richer and fancier. You have the Champs Elysees, the Arc de Triomphe. This is an iconic place to visit. If you come to Paris, you need to visit the 8th. It's too expensive usually, but it's a great district. And I'm gonna put it in Eat the Rich. Okay, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about the 9th. The 9th arrondissement is one of the best, one of my favorite with the second. It's just incredible. You have the Opera, you have the Galerie Lafayette, many fancy places, but also a lot of creative restaurants, like near the Rue des Martyrs, near Pigalle, near the Grand Boulevard. It's so interesting to be in the 9th arrondissement. I just love to go there. There are so many food and places to discover. I want it in my veins. The 10th arrondissement is kind of difficult to judge. A few decades ago, it was the worst place, especially near Gare du Nord, it's still really unsafe. But I just love it. I just love the 10th. It's getting more and more gentrified. And you have creative cafe. It's trendy, it's a bit hipster. I just love the vibe and near the Canal Saint-Martin, it's so beautiful. You have Republic with many bakeries and brunch. I just love the 10th. It's getting more and more interesting. So I'm gonna put it in I love it. The 11th arrondissement, this is the hipster district. Like 15 years ago, there was this cliche about the people from the 11th. It was this guy in his 30s with a big beard. He works in a creative agency. He buys organic groceries and he goes to a wine bar or a tapas restaurant. You can see his vibe. The city hipster, this is the 11th arrondissement. It's inspired by culture from everywhere in the world. So it's really interesting to visit the 11th, but I think that it's overrated. Like the 9th is better. The 10th is getting what the 11th could be or want it to be. So the 11th is interesting. It's great to live in. But people who are in the 11th are just are just so annoying about the 11th. Like we know, we know it's cool to live here. We understood. Please stop. So I'm gonna put it in the overrated ranking. The 12th arrondissement, it's close to the edges. You don't have that much to do in the 12th. I think the most famous is Bercy. Bercy village with many shops and restaurants. And also the Accor Arena where you can go to live shows. This part is great, but the best thing about the 12th is that it's close to other good arrondissements. So I can't put the 12th anywhere else than who lives here. It's not that much interesting. The 13th arrondissement could be like the 12th, but it's a bit more interesting. For a long time, it was the Asian district with many Chinese and Vietnamese restaurants especially. So you have really good food here. It's not the most beautiful district in Paris. It's close to the edges with modern buildings. It's not the beautiful typical Paris you see in the books or on TV. It's not the Emily in Paris vibe. But I like the 13th. You have things to do, you have things to visit and to discover. You need to dig a little bit inside to discover all the hidden gems, but I like the vibe. And you have also the Station F, which is the biggest startup incubator with La Felicita, the biggest restaurant in Europe. You have things to do in the 13th. I want to give some support to the 13th and I'm gonna put it in the don't give up ranking. Go girl, don't give up, you can do it. I think it's a bit the same with the 14th, it's on the south of Paris. You have the Tour Montparnasse, a lot of shops and restaurants around, but it's more residential. So it's not like too quiet, there is still things to do in the 14th, but it's not as interesting as the 9th, for example. But with the years, people are opening really interesting places in the 14th, so I'm gonna put it in don't give up. The 15th arrondissement, do you know the 15th arrondissement? Me neither. There is nothing to do in the 15th. It's really just a residential area. And when you live in the 15th, you are far away from everywhere else in Paris. So it's not that good to live in the 15th. I think it's the most populated area of Paris because it's more residential. But yeah, it looks like a suburb city. It's not, it's not the vibe. Sorry, 15th, you don't match the vibe. So I'm gonna put you in who lives here? The 16th arrondissement, it could be like the 15th. But you have uh, the Tour Eiffel just nearby and people love to be in the 16th arrondissement because it's fancy, it's for the rich people, a beautiful architecture. I like the vibe. I was there a few days ago for a vlog and I like the vibe of the 16th, but there is not that much things to do. So it's quiet, it's beautiful. It's also where all the rich people live. I'm gonna put it in 
hit the rich. The 17th arrondissement hits at the northwest of Paris. I don't know that much this area. I know that near the Parc Monceau, it's really beautiful, like the architecture is great, but I remember when I went there a few months ago, in the middle of the day, the streets were empty. It's beautiful, it's good to live here, it's quiet, but you don't have that much to do. There are some places that are opening the 17th. The Boulangerie Basilus is delicious. So I'm gonna put it in don't give up because I want to see the 17th being more and more interesting with years. Create new activities to do in the 17th. The 18th arrondissement, you already know it for Montmartre because Montmartre, it's the typical vibe of Paris. It's beautiful, but it's also really touristic. Many Parisian people don't go to Montmartre because it's too crowded, but it's still a really good vibe. At the north of this area, it's not the safest place, but it's still really interesting with Montmartre. And you have also the Rue Ramey with many bars and restaurants. I know people who live there and they love this district. It's typical, it's beautiful. I'm gonna put it in, I love it. Okay, we need to talk about it. I'm gonna get some enemies because of it, but the 19th arrondissement is maybe the most unsafe in Paris with also a part of the 10th, but the 10th is going to be more and more gentrified. The 19th, it's not that. You have places like Stalingrad or Jaurès that can be really unsafe, but you have also Les Buttes Chaumont, which is one of the most beautiful parks in Paris. Is it saving the 19th? Mm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I'm gonna put the 19th in the side eye because you have many unsafe streets. I know I'm gonna have some enemies because of my ranking because I know people who live in the 19th and they love their district, but I think it's like a Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> the, the 19th can be really interesting. You, you have beautiful places here but it's not as good as the other districts in Paris. I'm sorry, guys. And it's time to finish with the 20th arrondissement. I don't have that much to say about the 20th. I know some friends living here and it's good to live here, like it's a good residential area, but you don't have many things to visit in the 20th. The only big thing is the cimetière du Père Lachaise. It's a graveyard, so it's not the beautiful touristic area of Paris, but it's a great place for a walk and it's interesting to visit the tomb of many famous French people. And you will also see the tomb of Jim Morrison, The Doors singer, because he died in Paris, so he's buried there. And it's like the tomb where everyone wants to take a picture. When your monument, your touristic place is a graveyard, it means that the district is not that interesting. So I'm gonna put it in who lives here. That's it for this tier list. I think my ranking is okay. You can see that my favorite ones are the 9th and the 2nd. I just love this area. You go there and you will meet me every day. To give you an idea about Paris, the best places to visit if it's your first time are in the center of Paris because it's the more typical, also the more fancy and the more touristic. Every district has interesting things to discover inside. Even the 19th that I put in the side eye ranking, you have Les Buttes Chaumont and it's an unmissable place to visit. It's a beautiful park. Even the 19th is interesting. Tell me in the comments what is your favorite arrondissement or if you live in Paris, tell me in which arrondissement you are living. And by the way, if you are visiting Paris this year, I created guides and maps of the city that are available on my website. You can click the link in the description below. And if you want to explore Paris and discover the French way of life, don't forget to subscribe. I post every day, so see you tomorrow.